Vincent, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Riley. I'm so excited you could join us for Bible Fellowship. We're here at Louis Tussauds Palace of Wax in Dallas, where I'm surrounded by some very famous characters, like the Scarecrow and Dorothy. Vincent, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Vincent, you scared me. What? I was just trying to practice my Heisman pose. <laughs> When I make it big time, I'm totally gonna expect to be made into a wax figure. Pretty cool, huh? You'd be in good company. Look at this place. Yeah, they got musicians and people in history and actors. And they have TV show hosts and my favorite, Jimmy Fallon. <laughs> so why did we come here for Bible Fellowship? That's a great question. Let me ask you, what do all these people have in common? They're all famous? Most of them, yes, but what else? I don't know. I mean, they'd all melt if they go outside and get exposed to the heat. That's true, but we're here to show you that throughout history, people have used their skills and talents to make an impact on the world. And as we focus on God and His creation, which is me and you, there's no telling what we could do. Creativity is this month's life app. Creativity, imagining what you could do because you are made in God's image. The Bible tells us, Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. Psalm 145, 3. We can use our creativity to share His love and help others every day. And if you've been with us this month, you know that we've been doing some pretty cool science experiments to show God's creativity. It has been a blast. Well, probably for our very last experiment, we're going to have to ask a very serious question. Oh, okay. What's that? Have you ever wondered how elephants brush their tusks? <laughs> Good question. Actually, no, how does an elephant brush their tusk? I mean they have pretty big toothbrush and a big tube of toothpaste. <laughs> exactly. That's why today we're making our own elephant toothpaste. This is going to be awesome. Let's just see how big we can make this toothpaste. It's going to be huge, gigantic, amazing, indescribably massive. <laughs> well, I don't know if you can make it indescribably big, but I do know something that is. God. God created everything in this entire universe. Do you know how big the universe is? There are trillions and trillions of stars and planets in our solar system and other solar systems that we don't even know about. But our God created all those stars and planets and He created us and He knows us by name. Now that's indescribable. Just to get a glimpse of how awesome God's creation is, let's start on this experiment. Woohoo! What's up kids and preteens? I'm Connor Chambers. And I'm Beth, what up? We are so excited to be with y'all today and we are talking about creativity the whole month of August. Oh yes, because our God is indescribable and he made us to be creative. And we've got an awesome experiment laid out for y'all. Oh, it's gonna be the best, y'all have no idea. We're about to make elephant toothpaste. So so what, what we've we got? got here is, is, is we've got uh, some hydrogen peroxide with some soap in it mm. to make some foam, right? Okay. And then over here, we've got a catalyst Ooh, to help, uh, you I know, make the fun stuff happen, right? <laughs> oh, I'm stoked. I'm here for it. And then, uh, and then we've got some, uh, some food coloring here so that, you know, it's got to be colorful, right? For the, for the kid elephants, right? So they can enjoy the toothpaste. Are you ready? Here we go. Okay. On the count of three. Okay. One, two, three. Ooh, Ooh look at that. That looks like a volcano. That's so cool. Well, a sunset. It could be a sunset. You get so much so day. Okay, this experiment was absolutely unreal. Like, this looks like an amazing sunset. I know. It's so like, oh, poofy. But this also reminds me of how great and awesome our God is. Every single night, He paints these amazing sunsets, and every morning, He paints these amazing sunrises. You guys are the best. We'll see you later. Bye, guys. See ya. That was so cool. Of course. No elephants were harmed in the making of the video. <laughs> Very funny. Science is a great way to explore God's creation. And if you love science, then we have a back to school giveaway. You won't want to miss it. We are giving away a super cool science kit to several lucky families. All you have to do is take a picture of you and your family watching church together and post it and tag us on our website. We will be announcing the winners on social media during the week. So good luck. We are looking forward to seeing your pics. Hey everyone, I'm Kathy. We have had an incredible month learning about creativity and how our creator is indescribable. Well, today we're talking about salt and light. 
Confused on why salt and light? Well, we'll get to that in just a minute. Now, crowds would gather wherever Jesus went. They wanted to hear his wise words and see him do many miracles. Well, one particular day, as Jesus saw a crowd gathering, he led the people up a mountainside and he began to teach them there on that mountainside. This experience came to be known as the Sermon on the Mount. While Jesus was explaining this, he explained that we can live out God's love when we show his love to others. Matthew was one of his disciples who was there that day, and he wrote down the words that Jesus spoke, and we can read them in the Bible in the book of Matthew. We're going to start in chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Here's what God's word says, starting in verse 13. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. So we as followers of Christ are salt and light. But let's look at salt first. Salt is very important for several things. It can be used to flavor food. It's helpful in seasoning food. I mean, I don't know about you, but anytime I have chips and salsa at a restaurant, I add extra salt. Mmm, so good. <laughs> Hold up. It's coming. So sorry. Well, salt can also be used as an antiseptic to clean out wounds. It also helps keep food safe and fresh. Did you know that things like cookies and ice cream and cake all have salt in them? I mean, all of it. In Bible times, salt was so valuable that it was used to pay soldiers. The phrase not worth his weight in salt was commonly used. The word salary comes from the word salt. For Jesus to tell his followers that they are the salt of the earth implies that we have great value. Now, on to light. Jesus also called his followers the light of the world. Like, look at this lamp here. It lights up the room. And when it goes off, uh, oh my goodness, oh, oh, that was my toe. Okay, all right, much better with light on, sorry. Otherwise, in a dark room, I'm just stumbling around over here. It would be silly to take a box and to put it over this lamp. The purpose of the light is to allow others to see it and for it to shine. The light that comes from a city on, at night that sits on a hill, you can see it for miles and miles. So we as believers, how do we be both salt and light? And how do these things work together? Well, first, we need to be salt to those who don't know Jesus. So how can we be salt to people? Salt is spelled S-A-L-T. S stands for serve. Be there for others. Serve. Jesus called us to serve others, not for us to be served. We have to use our gifts and talents to bless others. A is for appreciate. Show your appreciation for others. Applaud good effort and accomplishment. Say thank you. L, that's for love. Love the way that Jesus loves. Love others openly, sacrificially, and constantly without expecting anything in return. Finally, T is for treasure. Treasure and value others. Show them kindness, dignity, and respect always, no matter their past or your personal differences. When we treat others like that, when we serve, appreciate, love, and treasure those around us, man, we're the salt of the world in that way. And when we do that, our lives shine and point a light to Jesus and who he is and how much he loves everyone. When we help spread the good news about Jesus, we're shining our light. When we speak out against evil in our world, we're shining our light in the world of darkness. When Jesus said that we're like salt, he meant that we can make things better for the people around us. And when he said that we need to be light, well, we need to share God's story and shine his light and bring others hope that we have in Jesus help fill their lives with kindness, joy, and peace. We can shine our light by loving God and loving other people. Our lives can tell His story in everything we say and do. And in fact, God created you to share His story. Your whole life can point others to God's story. So don't just 
Talk about God. Show what a difference He's made in your life. Treat others the way you want to be treated. That's how we can do what God created, created us to do. Share His story. What Jesus said to His disciples that day is also true for you and me. God created us to be like salt and light. He made each of us with an important purpose. God created you to share His story. Our indescribable Creator is great and worthy of praise. Listen, God wants a relationship with you. He created you just the way you are. He has a plan for you. And the Bible says that all of us have sinned. That means you and me, but God is so holy and perfect, He can't be around sin. But He wants to be with us so much and loves us so much that He sent Jesus. And Jesus came to earth. He lived a perfect life. He died on a cross to pay the price for my sins and your sins. And three days later, He rose from the grave and He is alive. We need to admit that we're sinners. We need to believe that Jesus came and died for us. And then we need to confess with our mouths that Jesus is the only way to have eternal life and is our Savior. And when we do that, we're saved. Hey, if you have any questions what that means to be a follower of Jesus and you want to talk with one of our Prestonwood Kids staff, contact us. We would love to talk with you and to celebrate your decision to follow Christ. Man, that's all that I have for you guys today and for this weekend, but man, I think I'm going to go get some more chips and salsa. No, 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 no. I'm going to go get some Bluebell ice cream. Cookies and cream? Rocky Road? I think I'm gonna put it all together. I'm gonna do both of them. That sounds delicious. Bye, guys. When night has fallen, when fear is calling, still you're calling me. When my faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough, God, you're enough. Till it is complete Where my mind